Today I've got this nice viewer suggested algebra problem. So our goal is to find all natural numbers, and by natural numbers I mean positive integers a and b, such that the parabola defined by y equals ax squared plus 6x plus b, and the line defined by y equals ax plus 6 intersect exactly one time. Okay, so let's see how we can do this. Well, maybe we first want to set these two equations equal to each other so that we can look for the intersection points. So that's going to give us ax squared plus 6x plus b equals ax plus 6. And now notice that gives us a quadratic equation in x where we can think about a and b as undetermined constants at the moment. So if we rearrange this a little bit, we see that this means that ax squared plus 6 minus a times x plus b minus 6 must be equal to 0. And then next we'll use like the fact from algebra that a quadratic equation has exactly one solution if and only if the discriminant is equal to 0. So let's maybe write that down here. So one solution if and only if the discriminant, which I'll call capital delta, and let's recall that that is b squared minus four times a times c is equal to zero, where I'm using capital letters here to mean the coefficients of x squared, x, and our constant term, just not to confuse them with our lowercase a and b. Okay, so that means we have a nice equation that involves a and b that we can maybe look at. So let's see, we've got this capital B squared, so that's going to be 6 minus A quantity squared minus 4 times this times B minus 6 equals 0. So that's the equation that we want to solve over the natural numbers. So let's maybe play with this a little bit. We can square this term out giving us A squared minus 12A plus 36. Then this is going to be minus 4 times AB plus 24A equals 0. So now we see that we have some like terms. We've got this minus 12A and then we've got this 24A. Another thing that we might want to do is take this minus 4AB and move it to the other side of the equation. So let's see what that gives us. We've got A squared plus 12A now plus 36 equals 4 times A times B. And I did that because now I can factor this left-hand side, and that gives me a plus 6 quantity squared equals 4 times a, b. And this is actually the form of our like original equation that will be a little bit easier to work with. Okay, so let's maybe bring this to the top. So let's see where we are so far. We've shown that we have one intersection point of these two curves, if and only if, a plus six quantity squared equals four times a times b. Now we wanna do some analysis on this equation. So I first wanna start off by noticing that the right-hand side, which is equal to four times a times b, is even. But if the right-hand side is even, then that means that the left-hand side, which is equal to a plus 6 quantity squared, is also even. But if we square something and get an even number, then that means the original number was even as well. So that tells us that a plus 6 is an even number. But notice that 6 is an even number, so if we subtract 6 from both sides, we'll have an even number over here on this right-hand side. That tells us that a is itself some even number. Okay, so we know that a is even. Then if you play around with it a little bit, you can see that a cannot be a multiple of 4. So let's maybe claim that here. So 4 does not divide a. So in other words, 2 will be the largest power of 2 that can divide a. Let's maybe see why this is the case. So we'll work by way of contradiction. Suppose that a equals 4 times c, where c is some natural number. 
And then we're gonna chuck this back into our original equation. So our original equation now looks like four times C plus six quantity squared equals four times four C times B. So that's gonna be 16 B C. Okay, next up we can maybe square out this left-hand side. That's gonna give me something like 16 C squared. And then plus, well, we've got four times six times two, so that's gonna be 48C plus 36 equals 16BC. Next up, I'll notice that every term in this equation is divisible by four. So I can maybe simplify the numbers a little bit by dividing all of these coefficients by four. So I'll just maybe say that by putting a little divided by four thing over there. Let's see what that leaves us with. Now we'll have 4c squared plus 12c plus 9 equals 4 times b times c. But now notice that all of this right here is even and all of this right here is even. But this number right here, 9, is odd. So that's actually a problem because now we have the left-hand side of this equation is kind of obviously odd. It's the sum of an even number and an odd number, whereas the right-hand side of this equation is even. So we have formed some sort of contradiction. And what did we contradict? We contradicted our original assumption, which was A was a multiple of four. So that means A cannot be a multiple of four. In other words, 4 does not divide A. So in other words, A is just a multiple of 2, but not a multiple of any higher power of 2. So let's maybe get rid of this and then move on to the next step. On the last board, we saw that A was equal to 2 times some odd number. It couldn't be 2 times some even number because then it would be a multiple of 4, which we showed was impossible. Now I wanna take the opportunity to look at our first solution, and that's when that odd number is equal to one. In other words, A is equal to two. So notice if we set A equal to two, we in fact get a solution here. So the left-hand side of the equation is gonna be two plus six quantity squared, so that's gonna be eight squared or 64. And then we have four times two is eight. So we've got 64 divided by eight, that will be B. In other words, B is equal to eight. So there's our first ordered pair of solutions. A is equal to two and B is equal to eight. So next up, I wanna look at the cases when this number is not equal to one. So that means it's some odd number, which is three or larger. But if it's some odd number that is three or larger, that means that there is an odd prime that divides A. So let's maybe see what sort of form that odd prime can take. So let's suppose that P divides A is some sort of odd prime number. But if P divides A, that tells me that P divides four times A times B. But that tells me that P divides A plus six quantity squared, because A plus six squared is the same thing as four times A times B by our equation up there. But if a prime divides a perfect square, then the prime divides whatever number is being perfectly squared. So that means P divides A plus six. But next, since P divides A and P divides A plus six, that tells me that P must in fact divide six. Okay, but if P is an odd prime that divides six, that tells me that P is in fact equal to three as there's only one odd prime that divides six. So that means this odd number here can only be a power of three. So in other words, we have A is equal to two times three to the M, where M is some non-negative integer. Okay, so now let's bring that data up here and then we're ready to finish it off. On the last board, we showed that A had to be of the form of two times three to the M. And then also we showed that the case when M equals zero, in fact, gives us a solution and that's A equals two, B equals eight. Now we wanna look for some more solutions. So in other words, what are some other values that M can take? 
And we'll figure those out by plugging this expression for A into our original equation and see what happens. So now we've got two times three to the M plus six quantity squared equals, so that's gonna be four times A times B, so that's gonna be eight times three to the M times B. So now maybe what I'd like to start with is factoring a two squared out of this binomial and canceling it with something over here. So factoring a two squared out will turn this into just three to the M and then this will just be the number three and then factoring it out over here and canceling, we'll have eight divided by two squared or just two. So we've got something that looks like that. Now we can square this binomial here. So it's three to the M plus three quantity squared. So that's gonna give us nine to the M plus two times three to the M plus one plus nine. So again, that's just from foiling all of this out. That's not too hard to see. And then over on this side of the equation, we'll have two times three to the M times B, like that. Now, next up, I wanna divide both sides of this equation by three to the M and see what that leaves us with. So now we're gonna have nine to the M divided by three to the M. That's gonna give me three to the M plus, so this is gonna be two times three. That's what's left over after dividing by three to the M, but two times three has a little bit nicer of a form and that is six. And then this guy right here will be equal to, well, we can write that as three squared, so it's gonna be one over three to the M minus two. And so all of that is equal to two times B. But now this right-hand side of the equation is an even natural number, but that means that this left-hand side of the equation also has to be an even natural number. In fact, it must be a natural number in the first place. But the only way for that to be a natural number in the first place is for this one over three to the M minus two to be a natural number. So let's write that down. We have one over three to the M minus two must be a natural number. But that tells us that M can equal zero, one, or two. Notice if M equals three, then clearly we have one third. That's not a natural number anymore. Well, notice the M equals zero term gave us this solution up here. So now we just have to check what happens with the M equals one and two terms. So let's write those out. If M equals one or M equals two, we actually get solutions in both of those cases. And in this first case, we get A equals B equals six. So they're both equal to six. And in the second case, we get A equals 18 and B equals eight. And those are the only three solutions, this one, this one, and this one that provide us with only one intersection point of these two curves. So now maybe for a little homework, see if you can solve this problem instead of over the natural numbers, maybe over all integers. And that's a good place to stop.